I'm trying to do like a two foot skank and it is not dropping. <laughs> I never felt so white in my life. Amongst the Samburu tribes of northern Kenya, where the desert merges with the foothills of Mount Kenya, women have been living under a harsh patriarchal system for as long as they can remember. Female genital mutilation has been one of the most important rituals amongst the Samburu for generations. Once circumcised, a girl can be given away in an arranged marriage to start her own family. This practice has seen girls as young as 12 get married to men old enough to be their grandfathers. But this year, Obama's visit to Kenya put women's rights at the forefront of national dialogue. Around the world, there is a tradition of repressing women, treating women and girls as second-class citizens. Those are bad traditions. They need to change. There's no reason that young girls should suffer genital mutilation. There's no place in civilized society for the early or forced marriage of children. These traditions may date back centuries. They have no place in the 21st century. While the world has just taken note, 25 years ago, a group of fed up women led an exodus and took matters into their own hands to free themselves and started a movement in the Samburu region, creating the first village where no men were allowed. The establishment of Amoja was an inspiration to many women in neighboring villages who have risen up to take control of their local governments. <laughs> So we travelled to Kenya to road trip through the Samburu district and see what life is like in a matriarchal society. We are on our way to the Emoja village, which is an all-female village which started in 1990 by a woman called Rebecca. Rebecca Lola Soli is the matriarch of the Emoja Women's Village and an advocate for women's rights. Growing up as a member of the Samburu tribe, she married at the age of 18 and began speaking up about helping women who were victims of rape by British soldiers training near her home. Local men, angered by her vocalism, beat her until she was hospitalised. When her husband did not protest the beatings, she left him, and along with several other women who were survivors of violence, established the women's village of Amoja. What was once solely a safe haven for women has now become a globally known example of a successful matriarchy. The internet has put Amoja firmly on the map. And now people travel far and wide to come and see how the land of no men thrives in the region of Samburu. I think that was our welcome. And what a welcome! Just get a cup of tea at my house, that's it. So, so far, it's all super nice. Everything seems really idyllic. Did you see the welcome though? Oh my gosh. Every single one can sing as well. Every single one of them ladies can sing. So we're about to have a sit down chat with Rebecca and hopefully she's going to explain to me how Emoja came to be, the pros and cons of living in an all-female society and uh, just shed some light what life is like here in Emoja Village. Hi Rebecca. That's how the house looks like. Ah, nice. This is now the big bedroom. That's the small bedroom, it's the kitchen, and this is our sitting room. Amazing. It smells so good. And to, to the women do all the renovations and yes. build all the houses. Build, build all the houses. Let me just tell you how we started. As a Buru woman, you have no right. If the husband wants to kill you, he have a right to kill you anytime. Because you are like a property and in the Samburu culture. Have you ever heard of a woman village? So they, they say, we have to destroy this village. We say, we are not going to move. Let them kill us and make a story of killing all of the women in this village. We decided to do small business, selling our jewelry on the road. When tourists are passing, we welcome them and they buy our things when we are here. When we started selling, we found the men beat the women and they take away the money. Do you think the men felt 
<clears throat> threatened by yeah, they do. women being able to make their own money. They do. With the ability to generate income, the women of Emoja have found independence. So every morning we have to come and display our things. This is what we depend on. Yeah. This is our living. Which one did you make? Really? It's nice. This is amazing. I read that. Um, I read that you met Hillary Clinton. <laughs> yes, I met her. Well, where's she's it? Nice. Yeah, she's a good friend of mine. I wish she. Uh, yeah. There we, you go. Yeah. Best, best because days. some good women, we are following her footsteps to be more strong, more strong as yeah. women. We have said, what can we do with this money? So we decided to make, to start a school. I've never had such a spring in my step about going to school, <laughs> Rebecca. <laughs> Sasa. Hi. Uh, go to Becca. Uh, hey. Are you going to Angadi? Uh, it's not only from Umoja, it's for all of us, uh, even from the villages, the men's villages. We decided to build the school yeah. because we have seen education is very important. Yeah. And uh, we don't want our children to be like us. We want them to have to have a light in yeah. their life, to have good education and to know what's going on in this world. Women in Amosia are still having children and sons are welcome as long as they are willing to follow the village rules and do not try to dominate the women. Although no grown men are allowed to live in Amosia, the women are still open to relationships and often rendezvous with boyfriends outside the village. You were saying in the beginning that you was having to deal with a lot of sort of problems from the men in the surrounding villages just kind of being jealous little bitches, basically, <laughs> about your success. We still have that problem, but uh, it's, it's not as big as before. They say I'm bringing a bad culture to them, but I know one day, one time, they will not yeah. cut these girls again. Angry husbands occasionally come to Amosia searching for their wives. The women of the village stay up all night in shifts to protect each other. The veteran women live side by side with the younger refugees who have recently fled to Amosia to escape the cultural rituals still prevalent in their communities. <laughs> And how do you feel about what Rebecca teaches at Amoja? Would you do you want to find a husband one day and have kids? Me neither. <laughs> So whilst you might think that Amoja's demographic would mainly be older women, it is also home to many young women who have sworn off men completely. So it doesn't seem like there's an awful lot to do to pass the time in Amoja village, but the huts that the ladies make need constant maintenance. So I'm about to go and literally get my hands dirty in cow shit. Just some chicks doing DIY. Can I? Start off. I've been by DIY. Yeah. And I'm like, that's my work, just that. It's quite clean, basically, but, it's, but warm. Imagine what, what hot cow shit feels like. Come, we've seen, we bought beads, and we're out. Uh, thanks, ladies. Yeah. What a wicked way to say, get out of my house, love. We've had enough. I'm filled with joy and, and love and, and a little bit of cow dung. Amosia has now become an accepted part of the Samburu landscape, but not everyone is happy about it. By providing a safe haven for local women, it has also become a threat to some local men. So, on my second day in the district, 
I went to meet a man nearby whose wife had rejected him to live in the village. So you think that if Emoja didn't exist, your wife would still be with you? Oh, well, that's good to hear for you. All is not lost. You can you can get another wife. Are, are you angry that your wife left you? Well, I guess haters are gonna hate, no matter what. Yesterday we went to go and visit Amoja, an all-female village where no men are allowed. Since Amoja, similar villages have appeared. Um, men are allowed in these villages, but women still have the overriding say. What I'm hoping is that it's also a safe haven for the submissive men of Kenya. Just to be clear, we've got Rebecca's blessing because um, these villages are kind of the trickle down from Emoja, and so we can't do any of this without her say so. As the leader of Emoja, Rebecca dictates who is allowed in and out of the wider community. I think this was the ceremony. We just drank some goat milk. It's delicious. Recommend it. And um, we're going to go and see what's going on. So a big part of how these villages survive is on tourism, which means when you come, you better buy some beads. Such a shame. So many beads, so many, many beads. As you can see, another tourist truck has come and we've been upstaged by some Germans. Fair enough, they're buying beads. Um, we're going to speak with the chair lady of Nachami. Oh, I'm good, thank you. There's probably enough, enough goat's milk for, for a lifetime. <laughs> yeah? Okay. Got my bead stem, got my goat's milk, got my mat. At Amoja, there's no men at all. You have men here. Can you tell me what role the men have if you're the chair lady? So the husbands are here, but who has the overriding say? Men who are allowed to live among the women here must reject the traditional Samburu principles and agree to a new way of thinking. It was time to speak to an enlightened man who chose to live in Nishami. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Michelle. Uh, I'm Eba. Eba, nice to meet you, Eba. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you live here? Yeah, I live here. Yeah? Yeah. Um, have you got a wife? Yeah. I'll only marry one, one, one wife. Mainly because if, if you marry four wives, you'll have four problems. Yeah. yeah. I don't want me to be uh, more greater than her, you know? Yeah. You want just to, to do the same. And yeah. they work, we we'll work the same. It's quite... It's quite um, a modern way of thinking, yeah. right? Yeah. Quite a modern man, you boy. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So we need we need trailblazers like you, yes, guys yes. like you out yeah, there, yeah. letting other guys know like, hey, yeah. this makes sense, man. Yeah. 
What Nashami showed me is that the message of equality is spreading to younger generations. Do you know the meaning of Nashami? No, tell love. me. Love. Love. So ah. we love each other. Well, there you have it. Proof that men and women can be equal. Unfortunately, it's all the way in bloody Africa, though. See you later. Mwah, mwah, mwah. That was really fun and, um, I'm just now feeling the effects of drinking hot goat's milk in the hot sun and being in a truck with no suspension. I feel like I'm just going to shit out a log of cheese later. Mm -mm. With the network of matriarchal villages growing, many men in the Samburu tribes are discovering female empowerment for the first time, which scares most of them. Right outside Nashami, I stopped to talk to two local men about their views on the changing culture. In Samburu custom, the tribes are run by a collective of male elders who rule with complete authority. First, I wanted to speak with a man from a traditional Samburu society to understand the nature of change in the region. What are your views on men who live in villages where women have the overriding say? Do you think that you can keep tradition and have some equality? Madam, Kajili Sasa, Kutuka Samani Wakatis and Asaliwa Sisi were no meeting to Nongos. Sasa, Mimi Awesiko by Madam Kang, Murisha. What do you think about women in Amoja and surrounding villages making their own money? Ile na wasa ko kwa na pata shida na kuna mtu na saidia. Kwa jile ko na wasa kupigwa na mtu ngini au nini na na pata shida na wana ome tundi o ndi o kufuwa ya nini ya bomba. Do you think a society can only work if there's men there? Wana ome ndi wana wakua. Wana wakia kuna sugu wako wakua. Wapita. We're about to meet a man who's part of a matriarchal society. We've had to meet him here in the middle of nowhere because he doesn't want the women to find out. But apparently he says the truth must be told. So we're going to get to find out how he thinks that this has affected tradition. Can you tell me what life is like living in an all-female village? Every village um, I've been to and all the women I've spoken to all of them across the board agree that they would like female circumcision to stop. Zamburu, inaenda kweli awezi isha. Sita kulanganya. Kwa sababu, inaenda na... Kwa sababu sema mba kusamukanya wa sita napana tayarishwa. Kuna wakati, tusema sa mimi, bibi yongo metayarishwa. Sijesu kusama uongo, hata madada zangu. Kwa sababu, hii anasoma. Nisuko inajua saizi, siwezi kubali tayarishwa. Although female genital mutilation is banned in the country, over 80% of Samburu brides still undergo the procedure. As villages such as Amoja start to outlaw this practice, hope of eradicating female circumcision spreads throughout northern Kenya. On our third day, we hope to get more insight on the matter. This is Supa village, which uh, seems to be part of the matriarchal wave that has sprung from Amoja. It's a pretty nice way to be greeted. Very happy to see you, and you are most welcome to our village. Marianne, the chair lady here, has created a matriarchal village similar to Nashami, except here the gender roles are differentiated. The men carry out the physical labor while the women make the rules. I started from Umoja. Right. 
And then I stayed in Umoja for almost four years. And then I shifted to this place. Long days, we don't have rights. So if the men say, you have to do this, we have, so we have to follow them. But nowadays, and the women they have their own right because they can make their things and they have their own money. Yeah. And they can say you don't want women to get circumcised. And yeah. they can say that our daughters must go to schools. How do the men feel who live here that they're not in the traditional role for a man? Uh, actually, they feel bad. They feel bad when we have that our right. But they think that we are losing their traditional. What, what is it that you think that bothers men the most? Do you think it's that they're losing their tradition as in they, that, that you guys have freedom of speech? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it's the tradition of female circumcision? Or do you think it's the fact that you guys have your own money? Mm -hmm. Circumcisions. From what I know, that it's, it's hard to get married if you're, if you're not circumcised as a woman. Mm -hmm but I suppose you don't need to get married if you have your own money. Yeah, most of the ladies nowadays, they don't like to get married. They go to school and they work and they get money and they're not circumcised. If you are not circumcised and you are some boy, nobody can marry you. So nowadays they don't bother about marriage. Do you think that in the future, men will want an, an educated woman who makes her own money? I don't think so. Are you aware that the world is fascinated with the story of Amoja and the surrounding villages? No. What you guys are doing here is something that most of us haven't seen before, and I think you're doing a great job of it, and you guys are doing it with style and grace and beautiful beads. If you was a young woman mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. you're 18 years old, would you get married? No. 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 Definitely no. <laughs> Every woman I've asked, I'm like, would you get married? They're like, no. Nah. <laughs> really? Yeah. We don't give men power. Because if we give them that chance, they will spoil. Right. Yeah. Men always fuck it up, don't they? <laughs> so Marianne was just explaining to me that uh, in this village, a lot of the men do just the manpower things, basically, like going to get water and letting the goats out in the morning and fixing a fence and stuff. How do you enjoy this place? I loved it. Yeah. I had such a nice time. I've never seen anything like this before, you know? Like a, where women, Run things. We're here at our final matriarchal village called Nagida. I'm hoping at this time I get some suspect liquid flicked on my face instead of having to drink goat's milk again. I see the goat's milk, man. I mean, I'd like this, but... A show a length. A show a length. Show a length. Right. Yes. Dance. A show a length. A show a length. Show a length. Show a length. Show a length. A show a length. A show a length. A show a length. Everyone. Can I just say that was my kind of welcome? Short, sweet, bit of goat's milk on the forehead, bang that out nice and quick, we're done. I couldn't leave Samburu without asking these ladies one last burning question. I wanted to ask, because I've been travelling to all these different villages, I have the worst periods and they last for like eight days. Is there like one week where everyone's like, <sighs> it's coming? 
My period's coming! <laughs> Sometimes kuna tu, when you last two, I'm not the same day. What do you do out here when you have your period? Do you sanctuary towels and then where would you, like, how do you dispose of them? Thank you so much for telling me because I've been wondering the whole time I'm here, I'm like, what would I do out here if I came on my period? Rebecca's influence on women in the Samburu region has created a trickle-down effect of woman power. Fueled by the matriarchal uprising, long-standing traditions that threaten the women of Kenya are being challenged. With access to education and their own income, many Samburu women are taking the future into their own hands for the first time in history. When they call us women, it's like a, a dirty name. We walk and we talk and we laugh. Let us show them that we are happy and we have to be proud we are women. <laughs>